Sony claims Xbox's real strategy is to make PlayStation more like Nintendo. So here we are again talking about PlayStation versus Xbox, Sony versus Microsoft when it comes to the Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard. This has been just absolutely crazy. I've made multiple videos talking about this stuff because one, it's pretty interesting to see where these companies are coming from. And two, in my opinion, the hypocrisy that we are seeing from the Sony camp on trying to block this deal is absolutely crazy. I put out a tweet the other day and I said, it's completely reasonable. Maybe this is in word for word. Go check out my Twitter if you want word for word. But I said it's reasonable for people to be, as a consumer, to be wary of Xbox buying Activision Blizzard. But the actual complaints that Sony has to try to stop this deal are completely laughable. And when you look at where Sony is coming from, you look at what Xbox has been doing with their ecosystem, the purchase of Activision Blizzard is going to be a good thing for consumers and PlayStation is coming up with some crazy arguments and they responded to the CMA with their reasonings as to why they want this deal blocked. We know the CMA is in the phase two investigation. They went over a bunch of stuff as to what they will be investigating. And they asked Sony and they asked Xbox and Microsoft to give them their explanations to defend themselves and why they want this deal to be blocked from the Sony side. And some of the stuff that they are talking about is just hilarious to look at when you really step back and see the gaming industry as a whole and some of the things that PlayStation has done throughout the years. So it's a large document. There's like 22 pages of stuff from the Sony side of stuff. A lot of it is stuff that they've already said. This isn't really anything that big and new, stuff that they've already argued. And then the Microsoft response is like over a hundred pages. And again, pretty much reiterating a lot of the same things they've already said. I'm not gonna go over the Microsoft side of things. We know their responses, I've done it many times, but I do wanna talk about the PlayStation side of things because it's pretty funny some of the things that they said. This, like I said, it's a, it's a document, 22 pages, and I'm gonna pull up some articles here that highlight some of the, I guess, most important things that Sony claimed with their response. So firstly, let's talk about this. One of the main things that Sony claimed within their response to the CMA is that they are trying to make PlayStation like Nintendo. And right off the bat, if you're PlayStation, you're looking at Nintendo as an extremely, extremely successful gaming console in terms of the Nintendo Switch and an extremely successful video game company. I don't see why you wouldn't really wanna be like Nintendo, but I think obviously from the PlayStation point of view, they don't have that same style of consumer base that Nintendo has. So it's gonna be really hard for them if they do end up becoming like Nintendo to be able to be as successful as Nintendo. But their argument here, again, is just absurd. And here is what they say. Microsoft claims that Nintendo's differentiated model demonstrates that PlayStation doesn't need Call of Duty to compete effectively, but this reveals Microsoft's true strategy. Microsoft wants PlayStation to become like Nintendo so that it would be less close and effective competitor to Xbox. Post-transaction, Xbox would become the one-stop shop for all the best-selling shooter franchises on console, Call of Duty, Halo, Gears of War, Doom, and Overwatch. In particular, Call of Duty is critical to PlayStation. Now, honestly, that argument right there, you take a look at that for what it is, just, just the words that they've written here and talked about to the CMA, they are right. They are absolutely correct. And I know that's not gonna be a very popular opinion, but they're absolutely correct here that if this deal does go through, Xbox is going to be the one-stop shop for the best first-person shooters. It's gonna be the place that everybody goes to. That's a fact. I mean, Call of Duty, Halo, those two alone are, are the biggest. And then you got Doom, you got Overwatch, one of the biggest hero shooters out there. That's where everyone is going to be going to play. And that's going to give Xbox a massive advantage, especially with stuff like the Xbox Series S, which is on sale right now for 250. You can even get it for 199 in the video I talked about yesterday. Just crazy how cheap that thing is. And you can get up to 120 FPS on these first person shooter games. So it's a match made in heaven when it comes to first person shooters and the Xbox console. The problem with this type of statement is that it isn't the only thing that makes PlayStation run. We know Call of Duty is massive on PlayStation, 
and we know that it's the game that brings them the most amount of money every single year people love to spout the exclusive stuff and playstation gamers buy games xbox gamers don't buy games and you can see that it's just like absolute bogus arguments when you take a look at what people are buying on the playstation platform there far more people are buying third-party games like call of duty over their first-party content however we already know xbox has said Call of Duty is staying on PlayStation. And even if it doesn't stay on PlayStation, I don't think it matters. I don't think that's something that is going to kill PlayStation. I don't think that's something that anybody actually believes is going to affect PlayStation to such a degree that there will be no more PlayStation in the upcoming years. What argument like this to me more just sounds like PlayStation terrified of having to expand their strategy if for some reason, Microsoft and Xbox are lying about keeping Call of Duty onto PlayStation. They don't want to actually have to go out and put that effort in to make that first person shooter competitor, which they absolutely can. They have the studios and they have the IPs to do this. They just have to do it. But they know right now a first person shooter like a kill zone bringing back a third person shooter that technically could compete in the same genre depending on how they make it maybe turn into a first person shooter like socom is not within the current virtuous cycle that jim ryan continuously likes to spout therefore it is going to be a waste of time for them to put in all this effort for something that they don't believe is going to be able to sell as well as call of duty they continue on here to say the franchise is firmly entrenched in gamer psyche every installment since call of duty was first released back in 2003 has consistently topped the charts it's topped the charts on every single platform that it's been released on and this has nothing to do with playstation call of duty has topped the charts because they've created literally a culture specifically around that game that people don't care what Call of Duty is coming out. They hear the name, they know it comes out at a particular time during the year and they go out and buy it. It's probably for a lot of people, the only game they play all year. Continuous here saying, ignoring these facts, Microsoft argues that Nintendo has been successful without access to Call of Duty. This misses the point. The decision identifies a wide body of evidence showing that Nintendo offers a differentiated experience to Xbox and PlayStation because it is focused on family-friendly games that are very different from Peggy 18 FPS games like Call of Duty. This is supported by Microsoft's internal documents, which so the CMA found show that in general, Microsoft internal documents track PlayStation more closely than Nintendo, with Nintendo often being absent from any internal competitive assessment. As is already seen, Nintendo does not currently rely on any content from Activision Blizzard to compete in the market. So again, I gotta be honest, that if true is a not a terrible point it isn't a terrible point here by playstation to say hey look at we know that they are giving you the example of nintendo but the reality of the situation is nintendo isn't nearly as big of a competitor to xbox that playstation is because of the style of games that are the most popular on the nintendo platform that's absolutely true and you can look at this without a bias opinion without a biased demeanor and say hey that is a point by PlayStation that should be taken into account when these regulators are looking at these things. However, again, the biggest thing out of all of this, going to keep going back to, is Xbox has said that Call of Duty is staying on the platform. There's too much money there for them to, to be made, for them to take it off of the platform. And then again, it's not up to Xbox to keep PlayStation competing in the first person shooter genre if playstation wanted to continue to compete in the first person shooter genre they need to go out and make their own game or they need to go out and make their own deals they have made multiple deals for massive games you think about final fantasy how massive of a game final fantasy is they take that off of xbox essentially when you look at final fantasy 7 remake and then now you look at the upcoming final fantasy 16 if you don't think that's going to have a big effect on where people decide to go play when that game releases what console they decide to buy if you are solely a final fantasy fan it is going to make a huge effect like people are not going to go out and buy an xbox when they see final fantasy 16 is only on playstation they're going to go out wanting to play final fantasy 16 and pick up a ps5 instead and playstation has done this multiple times with multiple different games with multiple different genres taking it off xbox 
so that people go out and buy a PS5. It's no different than Xbox if they were to take Call of Duty off. It's one game. Yes, it's a massive game, but it is one game in one genre, and it is absolutely no way, in my opinion, going to sync PlayStation, going to make it extremely hard for them to compete or anything like that. So I don't know how this section is going to end up when the regulators look at it, but like I said, yeah, I mean, PlayStation's points here aren't as bad as some people are making it out to be. It is true. PlayStation and Xbox are different from Nintendo. No matter how we want to look at it, that's a fact. They're different in the way that they do business. They're different in the way that they are as a platform. They're different in the consumer base. They're different in the way that they market. They're different in the type of games that are played on those platforms. So they're different. And that's true. Just I don't buy the argument that Call of Duty coming off of PlayStation is going to make PlayStation sink. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yes, it's the game that makes them the most money every single year. But however, I mean, like, there are many other games and many other deals that PlayStation is going to do to most likely be able to make up for that revenue. And they also have the IPs within their first party catalog to be able to come out with some just absolutely incredible stuff that people are going to want to pick up and play more and more often and expand out the genres that they put out there. That's the thing. They put out the same style of game every single time. Yes, God of War Ragnarok was an incredible game. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite games this year without a shadow of a doubt, but it's the same style of game that they put out over and over and over again. Start expanding out. Start making some more first-person shooters. Start making some more multiplayer games. Expand and broaden type of games that are going to attract people to your platform and i think that alone will solve any of the issues that they're going to lose with call of duty so next move on here to another claim now the previous thing i just talked about i mean potentially could be persuasive in some form if you're a regulator and you do absolutely no deeper research into the practices of playstation some of the things that they have done their backlog of ips that they could easily tap into to create competition and just do no work at all maybe you could be persuaded by the claims that they're trying to make playstation more like nintendo now this claim next here is just absolutely absurd so they're claiming here that the activision blizzard deal could hurt developers and lead to price raises and i mean we just got to read this title we'll go through with exactly what they say but right off of the bat this title is just absurd and the claim itself is absurd when you look at what playstation has done this year which is the company that actually raised the prices of the playstation 5 here in canada the ps5 disc edition is 630 dollars on release it was, or was 630 dollars on release now it is 650 dollars and it was already more expensive than the better xbox series x for what you were paying and what you were getting in terms of quality of life build quality, power, all of that type of stuff. And now that it's 650 dollars more, just craziness. But they're claiming that this is gonna push Xbox to raise their prices if this deal goes through. So first of all, they seem confident that the CMA in phase two will confirm that the transaction is likely to a substantially less in competition and that it should be prohibited. And Microsoft would control irreplaceable content which drives user engagement. Post-transaction, Microsoft would control Activision content which drives something was redacted there times as much user engagement on playstation than all of sie's best performing first party titles put together now i find this part funny because first of all like again what i mentioned earlier playstation themselves just completely destroy the narrative that first party games are the most important thing on any platform and that locking those games to the platform are the most important thing so that people actually have to go out and specifically buy that box they're literally admitting it here that Activision content is bigger on PlayStation than all of their first party titles put together, which is again very telling when people love to spout the reason why people buy PlayStation is for first party games. Moving on here, it says Microsoft would have the ability and incentive to exclude or restrict rivals, including PlayStation and PlayStation Plus, from having access to Call of Duty. First of all, Xbox, Microsoft, Phil Spencer have come multiple times and said that is not happening. Call of Duty is staying on PlayStation. They went as far as to offer them a 10 year deal to keep the game on the platform. The argument that they should offer them an infinite deal, a deal that has no end date is absurd and it's never happened. It's not going to happen. It makes no sense because you can't predict the future as to what is going to be happening with this game. Whether there may, will there be a Call of Duty in 10 years? I mean, I'm sure there will, but you just never know. So making a deal that is infinite makes no sense whatsoever. 10 years is more than enough time for PlayStation to come up with some sort of plan to be able to compete after that deal is over if 
Xbox decides to pull the game off the platform. Next, they say here in the midterm, a significant number of PlayStation users would likely switch to Xbox and or Game Pass. Faced with weaker competition, Microsoft would be able to increase console and game prices for Xbox users, including those that switched from PlayStation, increase the price of Game Pass and reduce innovation and quality. So first things here, the goal of this acquisition isn't just solely to acquire Activision Blizzard. Obviously, Xbox wants to be able to increase the amount of players that choose Xbox and Game Pass over PlayStation. They're a business. They are competing. That is their goal. PlayStation makes moves all the time to try to make sure that you literally have to buy a PlayStation and you can't buy an Xbox if you want to play certain things, which their whole goal is to increase the users within the PlayStation network and increase the users on PlayStation overall. So I don't even know why that's something that would be looked at as anti-competitive. Like that should be what Xbox wants to do. They should want to try to transfer over gamers from Nintendo, from PlayStation, from PC or whatever over to the Xbox platform. Xbox Game Pass itself right now is already much better than PlayStation Plus. Putting in Call of Duty and Activision Blizzard games will definitely increase the value of that, will definitely increase the amount of subscribers that sign up to Xbox Game Pass. I don't see again how that is something that is anti-competitive in any way. That should be their goal. And the next point is PlayStation could easily do things to try to compete against Xbox Game Pass, like put their first party games into the service. Imagine God of War Ragnarok in the service, what that would have done for a boost in PlayStation Plus subscribers, but they just don't want to do that. So that's on them, that's not on Xbox. It's not Xbox's fault that PlayStation isn't deciding to take the steps to be able to compete with a service like Xbox Game Pass. And then the part about reducing innovation and quality. I mean, if Xbox wants to reduce innovation and quality of their games after this purchase, it's just a terrible business strategy. I don't see them doing that whatsoever. And when you talk about reducing innovation, I mean, you can look at PlayStation. They can look at themselves in the mirror when it comes to the reduction of innovation. Look at the games that they continuously release. They're all essentially the same. They talk about the virtuous cycle, which I mean is re-releasing games over and over and over again because they know they're going to sell millions of copies. We literally just got the Last of Us remake, a third version of this game for a game that is less than 10 years old. So talking about reducing innovation, PlayStation literally does this with their first party titles. Next year, they say Microsoft's foreclosure strategy will lock in many consumers to Xbox, including existing Xbox users who play Call of Duty and those switching from PlayStation to play Call of Duty. The, these locked in users will become less likely to switch in response to any pro-competitive actions on SIE's part. This would effectively prevent SIE from competing for the business of a large portion of console gamers, reducing its incentives to invest. Again, this part, uh, absurd. It's absurd. It's an absurd take because it's like, they're sitting here saying, because Xbox is going to have Call of Duty, they're going to try to get people to come over to Xbox to play this game. We are giving up. We're throwing in the towel. We are not going to invest in our platform. It's going to reduce our incentive to do anything or do pro competitive actions. And then lastly here, as Microsoft foreclosed PlayStation, PlayStation Plus would likely become a critical distribution channel for independent developers. In that weakened negotiating position, independent developers will likely receive worse terms for their content from Microsoft or even be required to promise exclusivity in return for distribution, thereby diminishing independent developers' ability and incentive to invest in high quality new games. This in turn would also harm consumers even further. Again, an absolutely ironic claim. If you guys remember this from Bloomberg back in July, there was a big report coming out about how PlayStation treats indie developers. And this came out saying that several independent video game developers spoke out against the frustrating treatment they've received from Sony, essentially claiming that the Japanese tech giant fails to properly support smaller game developers. Continues here saying the relationship between smaller studios and Sony is in stark contrast to rivals Microsoft and Nintendo, both of which have shown more of a willingness to support and work with indies developers say Sony didn't respond for a request to comment and they go over a bunch of things as to why the relationship with Sony is worse than with the other platforms in terms of marketing game their games out to consumers and having to meet all of these specific things in order to be able to actually get your game out there into the store so that people can check it out and play it so again that entire argument from Sony is just absurd it makes no sense especially if you just take a second to look at all of the stuff that has been going on and it seems like their argument with that section is like this is what we do that is bad for the games industry. 
and we're going to project all of these things that we have a lot of knowledge on doing and project that onto Xbox to make it look like they're going to do these things because we know that these are the things that you can do if you have a system, you have an ecosystem that people are forced to go in and play in that system. And PlayStation loves that. They love to close off the PlayStation 5. They love to close off PlayStation so people have to pick up a PS5 to play all of their stuff. So they're able to do certain things like raise the prices of their games, raise the prices of their consoles, not treat indie developers as good as Nintendo and what, how Xbox does it. And I guess it almost seems like they're just spouting their experience on doing these types of things. And finally here, the last thing I want to talk about here is more of just information. It has to do with the next gen console. I know we still call the PS5 and Series X and S next gen, but they are not next gen. They are current gen right now. But we have some more information as to when PlayStation 6 and the next gen Xbox potentially is going to be coming out. But nothing crazy here. This is probably what a lot of people thought was going to happen, but it seems like this isn't going to happen until at least 2028. And if you ask me, six more years of these consoles, I think is fine. I think that they will be fine for the next six years, especially when you see how people are still playing on PS4, people are still playing on Xbox One. These consoles at release were instantly far superior than the PS4 and the Xbox One at launch, so they definitely can last all the way to 2028. But in these documents, so in some of Sony's arguments, they say here in public comments, just on October 26, Microsoft said that it plans to offer Call of Duty on PlayStation only as long as that makes sense, a period until 2027 or some other possibly shorter time that Microsoft unilaterally determines. And then they say by the time SIE launched the next generation of its PlayStation console, which is likely to occur around and it's redacted, it would have lost access to Call of Duty and other Activision titles, making it extremely vulnerable to consumer switching and subsequent degradation in its competitiveness. And then Microsoft down here says the parties Microsoft and Activision do not dispute that some portion of gamers are likely to reassess their console ownership at the start of the new generation, which I mean, this happens every single generation. People look at the offerings that are coming out. They look at what is PlayStation offering? What is Xbox offering? What is Nintendo offering? And unless you're like me or you're like other people out there that buy everything, you're choosing one console and whoever has the best value proposition is where you are going to go. The amount of people that only had an Xbox 360 that switched to the PS4 last generation because of the just terrible announcement of the Xbox One, what they did with that, the debacle of everything there, was probably just a huge number. This happens every generation. This isn't news that, oh, because Call of Duty is on Xbox, nobody's going to buy a PlayStation next gen. And then Microsoft says here, the next new generation of consoles are not expected to be released for the fall of 2028 at the very earliest. So there you have it. This could change, but it does seem like these consoles are going to be here until 2028. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on all this stuff. I know it's a ton of information. There's tons of stuff that's continuously coming out. I don't remember a time in gaming that this has happened where this type of thing has been so public, but here we are. And some of the arguments PlayStation is making are absurd. And I think that they know that the people looking at this deal probably just don't know that much about the gaming industry. And they're probably banking on the fact that they're not gonna look deeper, but I'm guessing that the regulators are gonna do their job and look deeper into these claims that PlayStation is making. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you in the next video.